Let's do this. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful and for the faithful. I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal, and I'm here tonight with Bruce McCurdy. Hey, Bruce. Hey, David. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay, Bruce. I'm doing okay. I, our, uh, I'm on a uh, um, beer league hockey team, and mm-hmm. we're in the finals now. We won our game oh, last yeah. night, and we've made it to the city finals for Tier 8 of the awesome. NCHL. So there you go. When's your big big finale uh next tuesday night is it's a it's a three game series this oh, is really? serious oh, that's the serious three. stuff Bruce. yeah very professional it's like the canada cup it is indeed <laughs> that's the three final uh, i'm the doug crossman of the team <laughs> uh a 1980s sports crossman. reference that no one will mm-hmm. get except for you oh, i got it I All was right. On that great Flyers team that took us to game seven in the 87 Stanley Cup finals mm-hmm. that year, Doug Crossman. He was indeed. So. Mike Keenan coached that team. Bruce, this is our two good things, two bad things, and two numbers podcast about the orders. Mm-hmm. 5 1 lost to the Minnesota Wild, a decidedly wretched game. Mm-hmm. Let's just get right into it. What's your good thing, oh. Bruce? Yeah. So. Uh, well, my, I guess my main good thing is that uh, uh, the Oilers aren't in the same division as the Wild anymore. When uh, Minnesota joined the league in 2000, they came right into the Northwest Division, as it was known at that time, and started inflicting pain and suffering on Oilers fans from early days, uh, either by beating the Oilers or playing bo- boring hockey or their specialty, both. <laughs> and uh, I'll say this about them. They no longer play boring hockey, so there's that. Uh, but I'm sure glad they're not in our division because that would mean more games per year, A, to rack up zero points in the standings, and B, for us to have to watch and discuss and grade. But also they'd be right in the bloody way in the playoff picture, uh, not only making it harder to get into the playoffs, but with a higher likelihood of having to meet them in the playoffs. And I want nothing to do with these guys ever again. Last year was great. They were not in our division. No games, no losses. Uh, this year, three straight blowout losses to the Wild. This is the second uh, season in a row where they have crossed over and played that the Wild have swept the season series with three regulation wins. And this year, the games were not even close. Uh, so there's, uh, yeah, precious little to say, to say good about that game other than, uh, uh, well, it's, it's good in this way. I did not, uh, blow any gaskets really watching that game or, or you know, it, it was the great Casey Stengel used to say when the 154 game baseball season, he says, as a manager, he says, I know before the season starts, there's 50 games that are going to go our way and we're going to win no matter what I do. And there's 50 games that we're going to lose and the other guys are going to have their way and we're going to lose no matter what I do. And it's the other 54 games where I, you know, where I have to earn my keep. And this game was one of the 50 losses. And it was established very early on that uh, Edmonton was the second best team on the ice in this game and they were not going to get any joy in Minnesota again. Yeah, after the second wild goal early in the second period, Bruce, I was just hoping they could have just called the run, game off. Run the clock, you know, straight time. Just, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> there's some kind of two-goal rule against the wild. Once you're down by two and you're the Oilers, you just give up because you, there's no hope. And I was just really wishing that, especially because I, mm. I it's my job to grade the game tonight. Oh. It was not an enjoyable task or an enjoyable mm. game to watch. Um this is a well it's, fan, it's I guess, like the but... Montreal. It looks like the Montreal Canadians from 1976. You know mm-hmm. when they were playing, like the, they make the Wild look so good, don't they? It's just painful. Well, I wrote a painful. note to you in the, in our in our um, uh, Grade A shots document that we that we keep during the game, and I said, for based on what I've seen from the three games against Edmonton, I predict that Minnesota will sweep to the Stanley Cup in 16 games because they're <laughs> invincible. Like. They are, they are just on some other look. level. Just yeah. on some other level from Edmonton. I mean, Jonas Brodeen looks like Serge Savard, and I don't know. Cap Kaprizov no. is like a fired up Guy Lafleur. Yeah, it's 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 uh, they come up big against the Oilers. This is not a team the Oilers match up well against. And oh, I like no. you. I hope they don't meet them in the playoffs. Although, 
Well, that would be mean that, well, unless they're it's in the first, conference yeah. finals. Yeah. So that would be unless it's yeah, yeah unless it's the first round. Do we know the other I don't scores think for that's tonight? Possible because I don't think we could. If Oilers got in as a wild card, still Minnesota would have to finish first, and they're not going to. So oh, okay. that's not possible. So okay. But anyway, gonna, have you checked the scores tonight? Any of the other ones? Do we know? Uh, uh, all I saw was Calgary was tied with uh, with uh, Seattle was the one on TV. Let's bring that up right now because this is going to matter I, some. Right? We'll just get a little bit of help, yeah, hopefully. I, Flames are ahead Fourth now. Against the Kraken. Lightning uh, and Stars. Oh, Canucks zero. three two. Canucks three two over the Knights right now. Good, good, good. Yeah. And uh yeah, well that's uh that's, that would really, that yeah, really help too. Yeah, that would really help if the Canucks can mm-hmm. uh and five oh the the Kings beat the Blackhawks five two today. And the Preds beat the Sharks one nothing in overtime. Ugh. All right. So not a oh. good night here and that's last well, the Canucks can hold on. Yeah, unless yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that could happen. That could easily happen. The Canucks are not a bad team. All right, uh, Bruce. And, and in theory, like they still have some kind of faint hope the Vancouver Canucks, so they might just be playing this desperate level of hockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a game they got to win. They got to win this yeah. game or they're done, right? So yeah. yeah, and the Oilers lost, so that might give them some hope. Anyway, Bruce, my good thing is in, in a game where there was really nothing <laughs> too good, uh, I, in the end, I liked Evander Kane's fight. Mm-hmm. Um he was involved in a couple plays late in the game. In the first one, he 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 levels an absolutely wicked boarding hit on Joel Erickson Eck, which I thought on first glance should have been a penalty, might have been a penalty. When you look at the replay, Eck kind of turns to him. He's certainly looking at him. He kind of has mm-hmm. his shoulder. So he kind of hits him in the shoulder numbers, probably mm-hmm. more in the numbers. But it was a nasty hit uh, in a, in garbage time. And I just like the message that that Kane sent at that moment. Like, I'm an SOB. Mm-hmm. I hate losing. And I'm going to make you pay for your victory. This is professional hockey. That was a professional foul. That was a nasty little <clears throat> foul to send a message to the other team that that we hate your guts. <laughs> so uh, I, as much as that's part, part of hockey, that and kind of intimidation, I like that, Bruce. I understand the message. Uh, I think he crossed the line a little bit to me in that check when he came up with the stick and he kind of got uh, Eric's neck kind of in the chin strap area, shall we say. And whether he got him in the chin or in the throat or whatever with the finish of the check, it was uh, it was the kind of uh, uh, Department of Player Safety who just find the same player $5,000 a day or two ago. Uh, might look askance at. Uh, we'll see if anything comes of it. But yeah. if, uh, uh, the, there, there's. I mean, there was no penalty call, but uh, there probably should have been. Um, yeah. I thought, anyway, I thought so too. gave him the old, gave him the old Mark Messier. Then uh, a moment later, completely. Like if you're wondering how Mark, if you never saw Mark Messier play, <laughs> play like okay, that. that's how he played. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and that was a value, right? There's value in that kind of play, especially as the playoffs come along, having that kind of toughness on your mm-hmm. team. It helps your team. Yeah. Uh, a moment, a moment later, Kyrie Yamamoto gets in a sequence where between him and the Minnesota wild players hacking and hitting each other, there could have been five minor, minor penalties, maybe four of them to the wild and one of them to the Yamamoto, or maybe three to two, depending on how you score it. But there was lots of holding and hacking going on mm-hmm. um, between Yamamoto, Kaprizov, and one other player. I can't remember who it was, but um, they were really going at it. And finally, um, Kane sees sees some of this. He sees Yamamoto getting bashed, and he just comes in and hammers <laughs> Kaprizov. Mm-hmm. He, he punches him in the head a couple times. And again, Bruce, I liked it. Did he cross-check him? I liked it because he's coming to defense of his teammate. Mm-hmm. and he's doing it in a snarly manner against a team that's pretty tough. You know, a, a team that throws mm-hmm. out a lot of a lot of hits. So um, they had it coming. That's all I'm saying. I liked, I liked Kane's uh, fight in those instances. So hit by fight, you mean battle level, because he, he, he definitely level. wanted to fight, and so did Ryan Hartman, and uh, one linesman played hero and broke it up, and then the second guy got in and, 
and stopped the actual fight from developing. Uh, yeah. But the scrum, the scrum was something else, man. It was Kane against five guys, it seemed like, at one point. And it's not like the Oilers weren't in there, but all the Minnesota guys were going after Kane. And, and he, what he did to me, like, I didn't like the first hit. I thought uh, one on Eck was dirty. Uh, the one on Kaprizov, like, he just gave back Kaprizov what he'd just given to Yamamoto, which is a high cross-check yeah. after the previous fouls. And somebody on Minnesota hacked Yamamoto on the leg, and then Kaprizov came in with a gratuitous cross check, and Kane just came and he just gave him the same kind of you know high, but you know not in the head level. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, then the Minnesota guys all waded in and to- started tossing glove punches and stuff. And then Ryan Hartman comes charging in out of nowhere and he jumps in and he tries to grab Kane, and uh, that's when the linesman broke them up. And after that. Um, uh, while they were separating the two, uh, Hartman actually uh, gave Kane the fig the finger. Like <laughs> he I, did. Give him the finger. How often do you see that? I have not seen that. Often, often, right, Bruce? Yeah, and well, then you, when if you're lip reading Jay Woodcroft, he's well, drop he's dropping a few f bombs. Jay Woodcroft is. <laughs> yeah. You can lip read it pretty clearly. Like, mm-hmm. how is that not an effing penalty? Yeah. And, yeah, well, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, somehow out of that, uh, Hartman got, I, I said to my wife, Hartman's getting an extra 10 for that, for sure, but he didn't get an extra <laughs> 10 because he got 2 and 10, and Kane got 2, 2 and 10. So he got 2 for uh, for cross-check and Kaprizov, and Kaprizov got nothing for an identical cross-check about an eighth of a second before the other one. The refs had to be looking at it by this point, and that's what had, uh, that's what had Woodcroft going, I'm sure of it. And uh, Funny thing, I said to my wife earlier, they, they'd had a clip from Jay Woodcroft, smiling, urbane, Jay, Jay Woodcroft, always at ease in front of a microphone. And I said, I said to Anna, I thought, I wonder if he's one of these guys that just never uses the F-bomb. Like, I've never seen any evidence, you know, that he's a, he's a, well, I saw the evidence tonight. And yes, I can confirm, he does use the F-bomb. And twice that was on camera. Uh, <laughs> He was saying, how the, is that not a penalty? You can, can lip read. And he was gesturing out to where Kaprizov had cross-checked uh, Yamamoto. And you know what, David? He had a very good point. And you know what? I like that. Like, that was almost my good thing. I like a coach that has spirit and and, and will respond to something that's going on in the game. And I, I like, frankly, a coach that will rip the refs once in a while during a game. So got so so tired of coaches turning the other cheek, whatever happening, you know, and just not getting animated. Tell me what, get animated, get your team involved, get get in there. So good on you, Jay Woodcroft. That was uh, I didn't mind that one little bit. He didn't cross check yeah, anybody Woodcroft. in the throat either. He just made his point. <laughs> yeah, he seems he seems to be growing into this role. Like you know, he's had a lot of time in pro hockey, and he's watched yeah. a lot of. He's lot. He's watched a lot of commanding and domineering coaches in Babcock and McClellan, right? Like he's seen guys who yeah. command uh, with mm-hmm. their presence, and I think he's picked up a few tricks. And you you can see his, in his demeanor. He's mm-hmm. he's standing there uh, like a Napoleon Bonaparte part of the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, because the other part of the time, he just he comes across as this nice, mild mannered teacher kind of person. Right. Yeah. Uh, but he does see. He does have that. Uh, that air about him now and then, and I like that for an NHL coach. I think you need that because it's a it's a very pressure packed and difficult job, with, and you mm-hmm. got to st- be able to stand up for yourself. All and right, your um, and your team, which he did. All yes. right, Bruce, your bad thing. Oh, let's hide your eyes, bad David. Oh, and I'm going to go with the defense pairing of the May December defense pairing of. Uh, Duncan Keith with Evan Bouchard, and especially Duncan Keith had a horrible time tonight. He posted a minus four in this game, and we had him responsible for one, two, three, four goals against. Look at that. He he made a mistake, and a pretty big one on uh, basically all four of the goals that made it four nothing, uh, starting with the clangor of clangers in this game a direct pass to the goal scorer in the slot who just walked in and deke koskin and put it in that was uh freddie goodrow nice play by him yeah. to accept the gift and 
you know, not panic and just make the deposit. But Smith I th or uh, Keith, I think, was trying to pass to Ryan Nugent Hopkins in the slot, and oh. just flat out missed it and putting up, put it on Goudreau's stick. So that made it one nothing at 5:37 of the first period, and then in the second period, in about a 10 minute span. Uh, well, Keith and Bouchard both were burned on the first two goals, uh, both of which involved a turnover by uh, uh, by um, uh, Bouchard, uh, one where Keith kind of fed him a, a very soft, easy pass in the corner, and, and a Minnesota guy took a run at Bouchard, and he just kind of coughed it up, trying to move it up the boards, and it just went right to Minnesota and around the horn and in the net, and... Uh, the other one was a more uh, was he he couldn't make a play along the boards. He was uh, Bouchard. He was trying to make a short pass along the along the boards, and it got picked off. And not quite as egregious a turnover, but a turnover nonetheless. And uh, Keith uh, was unable to uh, defend the shot on the one and he was involved in the directing the turnover on the other one on that <sighs> one Bruce, i i didn't know what pulley rv was doing like no, where were you yeah where where were you yes and pulley rv keith gives is this the one where keith gives him the suicide pass keith gives a suicide pass to bouchard in the corner mm -hmm. yeah. a player is bearing down on mm -hmm. on uh, evan bouchard yeah and that's all. not not so much on duncan keith yeah. And he put it right, right to Bouchard. So Bouchard puts it, he makes the play that he can. He kind of tries to push it up the boards to pull the RV. But pull mm -hmm. the he's not even close. He's he's blown the zone or something. You can't really tell. Well, he's he not, was, he's he no was, more. He was there, but the re point. reaching, reaching from yeah. the outside. And and he was, uh, he had a poor game uh, by his lofty standards. And uh, he was burned on two goals against, which is very rare. I mean, he's only been on the ice for two goals against in the whole time that uh, uh, that Woodcroft's been coached. So two in one yeah. game with errors on both is uh, not characteristic of that player. Maybe he was sick. Maybe he was and then, sick. Well, he was sick yeah. yesterday. Then on yeah. the fourth on the fourth goal, they uh, split up Keith and Bouchard for a bit and put Keith with his old man, partner, Cece. And I thought, okay, maybe this settle them down but no uh they got the the forwards got running around on that one and then uh the puck came to who was it that popped that one home uh ryan hartman his first of two uh took a pass a crease off and he got in completely behind keith and it was him alone on the goalie because keith was on the wrong side of the puck and so there's our veteran defenseman brought to sort of settle down the team and i mean he's He's had some good games and he's done some good things, but tonight was not one of those games and we didn't see many of those things. He had a very, very, very tough night. No, he, very, he, very, very, very tough night for those games. He was, um, Bruce, right from the start, he was handling the puck like it was a lit stick of dynamite. Like, seriously, he just he just never um, seemed settled with a puck on his stick. Maybe it was just the, like the size and ferocity of the wild forecheck. He was just thinking, okay, I got to move the puck fast, got to move it fast, but he just went too fast. Because he's usually, the strength of his game this year has been his play with the puck. Mm -hmm. He's had his struggles without the puck, covering players yeah, and um, some of his reads. But with the puck, he's been really good. Not this game, though. Um, there was just this, you know, the first backhand pass to nobody, except for the wild player who went in and scored. Mm -hmm. that was not like Duncan Keith. He's, he doesn't, no. hasn't made that play and, but he made it tonight. It's going to, and you know what, these things happen, you know, just mm -hmm. like Stengel saying about a third of the games are oh, guaranteed last night for NHL players, about one in 10 games are going to be a stinker. Like yeah. they just, for almost every player, they're going to have a stinker game one in 10 games. And that includes Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. They're going to have stinker games. And this was Duncan mm -hmm. Keith's night. Um, most definitely I gave him a, in the game grades, I gave him a two out of 10 and, and, um, That's, you know, that was not being unkind. That was being fair. So, yeah, there was another play that didn't result in a goal, but where the orders actually had got possession <coughs> in, uh, Minnesota's end and Bouchard was trying a simple D to D pass across the blue line. And he fired this grenade that came out of the zone and Keith backed off and then 
rather than make a play on the puck, he backed off some more. And the next thing you know, Minnesota's coming down into Edmonton's territory with the puck. And the Oilers were stuck in their own end for a while. It was just, you know, even from a good position, they found a way to go backwards. It just not was not clicking for that twosome tonight. He And Keith finally makes a good play. He he uh, he whips the puck up to center ice to send Cassian in on a breakaway, right? Cassian made a nice play oh, at right. center ice to uh, seal off his checker and get the breakaway. But it was a nice heads-up play by Keith as well. And what does Cassian do? He misses. The... <laughs> Keith's probably thinking, I might get an assist here. That'll make up for a few of my mistakes. And all of Cass misses the net. He doesn't even hit the net mm-hmm. on the shot. So that was kind of painful. Yeah, not Duncan Keith's night. Another player, It's it was, it was Ryan Nugent Hopkins' day today. It was his birthday, 29th birthday, Bruce. And... Um, had me thinking, I interviewed, I went to Red Deer and interviewed Nuge. We did a profile on him when he was drafted mm-hmm. first overall by the Oilers. And I remember oh, when yeah. he was just 18 going to interview him. Uh-huh. And uh, he was he was a very composed young man even then. Yes. Not surprising, he's the first overall pick in the NHL draft. Those mm-hmm. individuals, not always, but often tend to be uh, fairly centered and composed people. Uh-huh. Anyway, he's been in Edmonton all these years and um, he's a fan favorite. But man, he had a rough game tonight and it starts off we'll start off just with the second goal um he this is bouchard makes this really brutal soft turnover and the the wild starts cycling the puck and they they bring it out to the point and uh i i can't remember who's who i think it was yeah it was fiala at the point and nuge goes for him and fiala passes it in past nugent hopkins so that's the first mistake nugent hopkins allows a point or a pass into the slot and then he makes the, the the worst mistake. He he goes for a he tries to bump. I think Fiala and Fiala just steps aside and charges into the slot, and it's it's him. It's Nuge's check who scores that goal. So that was a tough defensive play uh, by Nugent Hopkins. Then on the fifth goal off the faceoff, Nugent Hopkins makes the wrong read just for a microsecond. And instead of heading out to the point to cover the point, which is his job, he's on the wing there because Ryan's taking the faceoff. He's kind of he kind of hesitates and then he's stuck on the boards behind the play, allowing the shot on net. So he makes a bad read. He's not covering a passing lane. He's not covering any player. There's an open point shot which is tipped on net and then put in the net. So he's in the red light zone for that one. So two pretty big um, defensive miscues by riding Nugent Hopkins. Hey, these things happen fast, like. At this, at any you know, at any level of hockey, who's ever playing, it always feels fast when you're on the ice. Of course, mm-hmm. but yes. the, the NHL level, it's just so unbelievably fast. And you know, his his mistakes were of that kind, just bang bang, just one microsecond mistakes where he makes the wrong read. Um, he goes for a check, which which he can't make. He 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 thinks he's going to go try to win the puck, help out Ryan in the faceoff circle, and it goes the other way all of a sudden, and then he's caught out. So these are just these small moments in a game and they're they are so fast Mm -hmm. but he was unable to make up for for either of them and they both ended up in the net um he did make up for it he did make up for it almost it would have been wonderful if he could have scored uh he got a great uh five alarm chance late in the third period where he he got fogel uh set him up for a a great shot in front of the net but he couldn't score unfortunately i I don't think we mentioned the grade a shots yet but they (laughs) They were as painful as the score. The great A shots were actually 12-6 for the Wild, but the mm-hmm. five alarm shots, the, the really, you know, highest quality scoring chance shots on net were 9-3 to three for the Wild, 9-3. to three. And since we've been actually tracking the five alarm shots, that's the lowest amount that the Oilers have wow. had. It may be the lowest amount that any team's had in a game, and we've tracked them since Woodcroft started with the Oilers. So, um, this particular five alarm shots. So, just three for the Oilers. They had nothing. And Nuge didn't have much either. Your number, uh, your number, Bruce. Yeah, number. Uh, I have a few different cho- choices, but uh, I'll go with uh, nine minutes and thirty-seven seconds, uh, which is the total amount of time that the Oilers were able to hang with the Minnesota Wild during the season series of 180 minutes of hockey. Uh, they fell behind to stay. At the 111 mark of the first period of the first game they played, uh, that quickly fell behind 2 nothing. 
Uh, the second game they played, they made it to the 249 mark of the first period before conceding the first goal and fell behind 3 nothing by the six-minute mark. And then tonight, they made it all the way to five minutes and 37 seconds. So this is improvement that uh, they stayed at 0-0 before Minnesota opened the scoring. And then all three games, Minnesota then scored the second goal. Uh, and two of them, they scored the second, third, and fourth goals to just completely put it away. And the other one, they won 4-1 with, you know, we're in command the whole way. And so the Oilers just spent the whole three games chasing the score. It's like they they should change their name to the Minnesota Kryptonite. And they've just got Edmonton's, uh, Edmonton's number. So uh, I'll uh, I'll choose that and I'll just make a passing reference to three games in a row, one goal in regulation for the Oilers. Not good enough, boys. Not good enough, boys. Got to put the puck in the net once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Four two, the Canucks over the uh, Golden Knights at the end of the second period. So mm-hmm. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, my numbers are the grade A shots in those three games with the Wild Bruce, which are even more discouraging because the Oilers are headed in the wrong direction. They out they had 11 to 7 grade A shots in the first game. Mm-hmm. Then they were outshot um, 6 to 13 and 6 to 12 in the last two games. Wow. So the last two games have been worse. The first two games against the Wild were marked by some of the worst goaltending performances of the year by Koskinen and then Koskinen and Smith, who split the duties in the second game. Koskinen, in, in that first game, he had seven grade-A shots and he led in four goals. And that was a brutal, that's a brutal performance. Um, tonight, he wasn't that, he was, he I gave him a four out of ten. He didn't, he wasn't terrible. He didn't, you know, come up with, he didn't steal the game, obviously. Would have been a heck of a game to steal, though, because if your own team isn't generating anything, just one goal, just, you know, six grade-A shots, that's 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 below half of the oh. season average for the Oilers. They, they average about 14 a game, grade-A shots, and they got six. So the Oilers had nothing. But, um, yeah, Koskinen wasn't the, wasn't the cause. But the Oilers, they just do, they're getting worse against the Wild this year. Um, I guess you'd, if they were to play them in a playoff series, you could say, well... There's only one way it can go now. So that would be the uh, the hope. Quick, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in that second game, it was, it was Smith who got the start and he got the yank after four goals against in 13 minutes, I think it was. And then Costin came in and gave in three more. And in the, in the first game... I went to the 4-1 game, the first game of the three, and Costin laid yeah. in one real stinker of a goal. <clears throat> I think it was the first one. It was kind of... It was a weird play off the backboards, and he got beat to the short side post, if I recall. It was like, I think it was the first goal, like one minute into the game. <clears throat> so tonight, you know, we'd like to see, you know, maybe one or two more saves from him, but that's not going to make the difference in a 5-1 game. And let's not forget there were plays <clears throat> like the one where Brett Kulak, from behind his own net with all day to pick a pass receiver, decides to rifle one up the middle right off a wild guy who immediately fires a wicked shot in the top corner that Koskinen pulls down with his glove. Saved a goal on that one, but, you know, it's kind of lost in the fog of war in this game, but uh, he didn't have a lot of help. Let's put it this way. Oilers defensemen were much more involved in grade A uh, five alarm shots for the wild uh, then the Oilers were able to generate all night long at the, at the good end. I mean, directly involved, brutal turnover to the guy who scored or, or you know, plays of that uh, of that ilk. Yeah, it was really it was really a rough game for the defense. You know, the only defenseman, Bruce, who, who actually came out of that unscathed was Darnell Nurse. He had one of his better games at even strength that we've seen. He he was he had kept a clean sheet at even strength, not one major mistake on a grade A shot against at even strength. Mm-hmm. He did have one moment on the power play where he let up a, a slot pass in, which will happen. <clears throat> but he was really good. And um not really good, but he was okay. He he didn't get a lot done offensively, but he held his own in the mm-hmm. defensive end at least, which was a good yeah, it's a good sign. Like he uh, as has been pointed out, he plays a lot of tough minutes, Darnell Nurse does. And that's been a higher number since uh, Jay Woodcroft has taken over. Jay Rook- Woodcroft, I think, is much more likely to match lines and try to get certain players out there. And he gets Darnell Nurse out there against in all the tough situations. Um, I don't know if that happened tonight, though, so much. 
I don't know if that Kaprizov line, how much Nurse would have played against them tonight. That would be, uh, it seemed like Bouchard and Keith were out there a lot against those guys. So anyway, yeah, Nurse was okay. Sure. Yeah, not the best. All right, Bruce. So Thursday in Nashville. Uh, Thursday in Nashville. Uh, I'm pretty confident saying they'll be better in uh, that game than they were tonight. Uh, just looking up. Yeah, Nurse, the forward he played the most was Kaprizov. It was, eh? Uh, yeah, uh, 628. And he played eight minutes against the kulikov Brodeen pairing of uh, Minnesota. So, but fairly balanced. And, of course, a lot of this game was garbage time. So, in those situations, often the coaches will get out of the hard matchup stuff, especially when he's starting to go to the blender, like... Uh, Woodcroft was for a big chunk of this game. Yeah. All right, Bruce. Well, let's leave it there, and we'll talk again on uh, Thursday night. Thanks for talking tonight. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. And in the meantime, and in between times, this has been another edition of the Cult of Hockey podcast. <laughs>